Hey everyone, Jessica here from JewelryTutorialHQ.com. In my last video, we talked about the kind of tools you need to get started making wire wrap jewelry. In this video today, we're going to cover another frequently asked question, which is what kind of jewelry wire do I need for wire wrapping? Well first, let me just clarify that wire wrapping is a pretty broad term, so that can actually mean quite a few different things. In this video today, the type of wire wrapping that I'm going to be talking about is what I just refer to as basic wire wrapping. So to me, that means things like wire wrapped loops and links, wire wrapped dangles and briolettes and things like that. Some other types of wire wrapping projects may have different requirements when it comes to the type of jewelry wire that you need to use for those. We might talk about some of those another time, but for today, this next part of the video is an excerpt from my new course, Wire Wrapping for Beginners, and the type of wire wrapping that I teach you in that course is this basic wire wrapping. So I just wanted to put that in context so that you can keep that in mind as I'm talking about what kind of wire will or won't work for the projects. If you would like to learn more about wire wrapping for beginners, I will put a link below the video or you can simply visit jewelrytutorialhq.com slash courses. But for now, let's talk about jewelry wire. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the basic properties of jewelry wire. There are a lot of options out there and it can be somewhat overwhelming, so I'm going to break it down for you and hopefully make it a little bit less confusing for you when you go to buy your wire. I've also got some really great resources in the supplementary materials section, so if you need more information about any of these things, I'm sure you'll find the answers there. In this example from Amazon, you can see that there's a lot of information about what type of wire this is, and I'm going to go through and help you make sense of what all these things mean. By the way, this is not what I want you to buy. I'm just showing you this as an example of how many factors you're going to have to decide on when you're shopping around for your wire. Also, these things are not necessarily going to be listed in this order, so please keep that in mind. So first, we have our material. That's what the wire is made of. In this case, it's sterling silver. Next, it tells us the shape of the wire, which in this case is half round. Then it tells us the hardness, or the temper of the wire, which here is half hard. Then we have the gauge, or the size of the wire. This wire is 20 gauge wire. And of course, the five feet there is just the quantity of wire you get if you purchase this item. So now what do all of these things mean? Let's go through them one by one, and I'll tell you what you should or shouldn't use for the projects in this course. Material. There are tons of different jewelry wire materials out there, and it's important to know that they all behave differently. Different metals have different properties which affect the way they act when we try to manipulate them. So, some materials are too soft and some are going to be too hard, which I'll explain more when we talk about wire hardness. What you need to know is this. For this course, craft wire is too soft, artistic wire is too soft, aluminum wire is too soft. If the wire doesn't specify what material it's made of or what temper the wire is, then it's probably too soft. Stainless steel wire is going to be too hard and memory wire is going to be too hard. So those are all the things you should stay away from for this course. Now copper, silver, brass, silver filled, gold filled, and German style wire are perfect to use for the type of wire wrapping that we're going to be doing in this course. So I highly recommend that you stick to those materials as long as they are half hard or medium temper, which again we'll cover in a minute. And I, I usually recommend that beginners start out with an inexpensive practice wire instead of practicing using more expensive materials like sterling silver and gold filled. So copper, brass, and the German style wire are excellent and expensive options for beginners to use as practice wire. So that's where I recommend that you start. Shape. Wire shape is simply the shape of the wire's cross section or the cut end. But the most common jewelry wire shapes are round, which is what we're using in this course, half round, which is flat on one side and rounded on the other, square, and twisted wire. Half round wire is not used for this type of wire wrapping, so be sure that when you're purchasing wire, you're choosing round wire, not half round wire. Square wire and twisted wire can both actually be used in the same ways as plain round wire for the types of projects that we'll be making for the most part. So that's something to keep in mind in the future when you're comfortable with the techniques and ready to experiment with some other options. I do recommend learning with round wire first before you move on to square or twisted wire, however. Hardness. Wire hardness, or wire temper, is basically how stiff the wire is. 
we want to use half hard or medium temper wire in all of the projects in this course. The other options are soft or dead soft and hard or full hard, which are respectively too soft and too hard for what we're going to be doing. When wire is too soft, it won't hold its shape. So your wire wraps will bend and smush and be very unsightly, which is not at all what we're going for. When the wire is too hard, it is too difficult to form into the shapes that we want. So in both cases, using the wrong wire only leads to frustration and disappointment. If you're looking at a wire that doesn't specify the temper, that's usually a sign that it's too soft, usually dead soft, not appropriate for this course. Again, craft wire, artistic wire, and aluminum wire are usually dead soft in temper, so please stay away from those for this course. Size. The size or diameter of a wire is also referred to as its gauge. The first thing I want you to know and commit to memory is that the smaller the gauge number, the larger the wire. So 14 gauge wire is quite thick and 24 gauge wire is quite fine. It's also important to know that not all countries use the same gauge measuring system, so please be aware of that while shopping for your wire. I always refer to gauges based on the AWG system, which is what's used in North America. Europe and other parts of the world may use the SWG system, and many countries don't use a gauge system at all and simply refer to the wire by its actual measurement. The AWG and the SWG gauge numbers are not the same, so that could be a little bit confusing if you don't realize. Again, I'll have some supplementary material, in, including some conversion charts for you to help you out there, and I will provide the measurements alongside the gauge in all of the project supply lists so you can be sure that what you're purchasing is the right size wire. If you'd like to learn more about different wire materials, shapes, hardness, and gauges, and different things that you use them for, I'm providing some very informative articles in the supplementary material section for this lesson. If you have questions about anything we've covered here, please don't hesitate to ask, but if you could, please first peruse the articles. There's a really good chance that your questions will be answered there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got all the information you needed about what kind of jewelry wire to use for making wire wrap jewelry. Don't forget, if you'd like to learn more about wire wrapping for beginners, there's a link below the video, or you can click right here on your screen, or you can simply visit jewelrytutorialhq.com slash courses. I've even unlocked a couple of free preview lessons so that you can take a peek at some of the videos that are actually in the course. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.